complex numbers, lesson number one, the imaginary number i. Now you've been told when you get a quadratic equation like this that you have no solutions. Well, that's right, you have no real solutions, but you have what's called complex number solutions. Now what I'll do here, I'll simply take this one across the other side and we get x squared equals minus 1 and then take the square root to both sides so it'll be plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 throughout is going to be called i so we identify the square root of negative 1 as i or we can say i squared is negative 1. Both are the same thing. So here we place the square root of negative 1 with i. So our complex solutions are plus or minus i. Right, now here's another one. So we'll take the 9 across to the other side and we get to x squared is equal to minus 9. So x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 9. What we'll do here, we'll write that as plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of minus 1. Now we know the square root of 9 is 3, so that's plus or minus 3. And from previous, apart from part 1, we know that the square root of minus 1 is i. So our solutions are x equals plus or minus 3i. Alright, now in part 3, we're just going to solve this by completing the square and see what we get. So we'll have x squared plus 2x. Take the 2 across to the other side. Make that negative 2. Now what I'll do now, I'll um, complete the square. I need to halve that number there and that'll be a 1 and then I'll square it 1 squared and I get 1 so I add 1 to both sides by completing the square if you remember so this is a perfect square now and I'll write that as x plus 1 all squared equals negative 1 take the square root to both sides so I get x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of minus 1 so x equals minus 1 plus or minus i. So we have two solutions, x equals minus 1 plus i and x equals minus 1 minus i. And these are known as conjugate pairs. And we'll have We'll talk more about conjugate pairs later on. And the characteristic is they're the same number separated by different signs. There's a different sign, a plus and a minus. Same numbers, different sign in between. That's a conjugate pair. We also we know there's, there's two parts of this complex number. This first part here is called the real part real part and this part here obviously is the imaginary part imaginary part in the previous two examples we only had an imaginary part here we have a real and an imaginary part all right we'll solve this one but we won't use the completing of the square method we'll use the quadratic formula all right so to do that we know that this is that a, a, a equals 3, our b equals minus 2, and our c equals 1. And the formula, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to now this becomes minus negative 2, so it becomes plus 2. So that's 2 plus or minus 
the square root of, and minus 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 3 times 1, all over 2 times 3, which is 6. So x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of, now this becomes minus 12, 4 minus 12 is minus 8, all over 6. So it becomes 2 plus or minus, this becomes the square root of 8 times the square root of negative 1, all over 6, which is 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 i, all over 6. Now we can take out the, a 2 as a common factor, and we get x equals 2 outside of 1 plus or minus root 2 i, all over 6. This will cancel, we'll get a 3. So x equals, now we'll break this up into two bits, that's 1 third plus or minus root 2 on 3i. And there we have our conjugate pairs again. So x is equal to 1 third plus root 2 on 3i, or x equals 1 third minus root 2 on 3i. Now you'll always get conjugate pairs provided these numbers are real numbers and we'll be looking at some situations when these are not real numbers and we won't end up with conjugate pairs.